Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really pretty fall pot holder. This pattern here in the quilt world is called a four patch. I've also got binding around the edges and don't be afraid of binding. It's really easy this version I'm going to show you. And there's also a little loop up here in the corner so it's easy to display it. Now let's take a closer look. The fabric that I'm using is from Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. And this is the Turkey and Pumpkins Harvest Cotton Fabric. You'll find this in the Seasonal Fabric section. And then this orange fabric here is in the Quilting Fabric section of Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. So that's where I got this. Make sure when you shop at Joanne's, you use the coupon app. You will save a lot of money. And also you will find this in the seasonal fabric section of your store and then the binding is also in the quilting fabric section of the store. So those two sections are very close together if you've never been there before. So I want to show you a close-up of this fabric. Isn't it beautiful and it's a lot of fun. And what I did is I did something called a fussy cut and that means you lay a square ruler on top, let me get my ruler here, and you center it within a four and a half inch area and you cut it out. And that's so that you can display it prominently in each corner of the pot holder. So for the front of the pot holder, you'll need two different fabrics. So out of those two different fabrics, cut two four and a half inch squares out of each of those fabrics. Then for the back you'll need one eight and a half inch square. For the binding around the edges you'll need a strip of fabric two and three quarter inches. So when you cut your fabric out for the binding, leave your selvage edges folded together, straighten out the raw edge of the fabric you purchased, then move your ruler over and cut it two and three quarter inches. Then you'll also need either two layers of cotton batting, eight and a half inch square, and or one square of cotton batting and one square of Insulbrite. Lay your fabric squares in this order. And if you're using this particular fabric, make sure that your turkeys and pumpkins are facing the same direction so nothing is upside down later. So take the fabric pieces and lay them on top of each other and then stitch one quarter inch seam along both these edges. Take the two sections and bring them front sides together and you're going to pin this center seam. So as you're pinning you want to match this seam, if I can just get it apart here, there we go. And you want to make sure that the seam on top is going in the opposite direction than the seam on the bottom. And push down on that seam and it should feel very flat. Then I would pin it to hold it in place so that it does not shift while you are stitching. Then along this edge here you're going to stitch one quarter inch seam. Press this seam on the back side, then unfold and press it on top and again push against the seam to get this seam going all in one direction. Now layer your fabric. So take your fabric for the back, place the front side, the pretty side, against your table. Take your insole bright and cotton batting or just two layers of cotton batting and then place your top piece down on top of that. Scatter pins all over the top because now I'm going to give you some suggested quilt stitch patterns and the reason why you want to do quilting stitches is to hold all the layers of fabric together because during the wash cycle and use it will come apart. It's all going to shift around so you don't want that. So here are some suggestions. You can either stitch 
right down this seam here and here. Or you can do one down the center, like you see here, of each section, including the center seam. Then you could turn it and do the same thing. So it's a little more decorative. You can even stitch this pattern on a corner or going from corner to corner. And then there's one more here. If you have the serpentine stitch on your sewing machine, that's this wavy line, most computerized sewing machines have this stitch. So you can just go straight up and down or you can go corner to corner. If you have a walking presser foot, or sometimes it's called a dual feed foot, I suggest you use that. It's going to prevent the layers of fabric from shifting apart while you are stitching. If you use a regular presser foot, you might get little pin tucks and the fabric might shift. So you can get these in sewing machine supply stores and you can even get them on Amazon.com and other sewing machine supply websites. I chose to do my quilt stitch pattern on the diagonal, which is my favorite, and I also use the serpentine stitch. And then here's what it looks like on the back. Before you put the binding on the pot holder, make sure you cut the selvage ends off so just lay both ends together and cut it off. Then do this next step at your ironing board. Take the strip and fold it in half and press it the full length of the strip. Set it to where you have one of the turkeys up here in the top corner and then this is the bottom corner. Now you're going to turn it over to where it's face down. Then take your binding strip and here's the, the end and here's the raw edge part. Place it up here in the corner and you can pin it down if you like or hold it in place as you stitch. And you're going to stitch, make it a narrow quarter of an inch seam right down here. And before you get down to that corner, you're going to stop one quarter inch away. Take it out of your machine and place your binding strip straight out along this way. Then fold it back and then place your finger or thumb there. Make sure this uh, binding edge is even with this edge here and fold it over like this. And I would place a pin here to hold it. Then go ahead and stitch one quarter inch seam along this edge. At the next two corners, fold it just like you did here. Before you stitch your last side down, take the place where you started at, up here in this corner, and fold it over to the front, this one edge, and place a pin there to hold it. Then finish stitching down your last side. At your ironing board, open the binding up and press against that seam, pushing the binding out and away from the pot holder. Then turn it over to the front and fold the binding up over the top. Take your binding strip and pull it straight out and then count over four and a half inches and then cut the excess off. Now have the front side of your pot holder facing up. Here's my front side. And lift one of the layers up 
of your binding and you're going to cut some of the binding off in this corner. Make sure you only cut through one side of the binding. So go over about maybe an inch and a quarter and clip and stay about a quarter of an inch away from the folded edge. Right there like that. At your ironing board, take this edge down here and fold it over one quarter of an inch and press it. Take this bottom edge here, this is the raw edge of the binding, and fold it over a quarter of an inch and press. Then fold over the top piece and then press it in half. At your other three corners, I'm going to show you how to fold your binding around it so that you have a nice mitered corner. On each side, pull the binding over past this stitch line. It's very important you do that. Pull it over past the stitch line and place a pin and take this side and pull it past that stitch line and place another pin. So now you have a bump here. So to get rid of that bump, take another straight pin, press down, pull in to this edge over here, pull it all the way over, fold over, and pin. And you have a nice mitered fold. Do that at your three corners. I finished pinning all of the edges down. Make sure your edges are pulled past your stitch line so that you don't see that other stitch line. So now start in this corner, stitch right on the edge of this binding. When you get to this corner, leave your needle down through the fabric, turn your pot holder, and continue stitching around. Now make sure you always leave your needle down in corners. This way you don't lose your place and then stitch to here. Now when you get to this little tail here, you're going to stitch right across. And usually what I do is I just hold my fabric layers together, but you can pin if you want to. And then stitch all the way down to the end. So you're stitching this closed. There it is, there's the end. And then stitch across the end here. So you're stitching up over the pot holder binding, down here, and across. Now take this end and bring it around like this and insert it behind the pot holder so it looks like that. Then flip it over, okay, and you could put a pin there if you like to hold it in place. And then what I like to do is I will stitch on top and I will just stitch a little square design. So I'll stitch up here about three stitches. Always leave the needle down. Leave it down and turn this pot holder. Stitch across here a few stitches. Turn the pot holder again and stitch and turn. And I would go around in a square about two times and then you are done. I hope you enjoyed making this pot holder. They're really a lot of fun and really easy and quick to do. If you're looking for a nice gift idea, you can make a coordinating kitchen towel and pot holder out of the same fabric. And I do have a tutorial on this. This towel will only take you about 10 minutes to make. Now before I say goodbye, I just want to mention, please follow me on Instagram at The Sewing Room Channel and also check out my Facebook page. You're going to get behind the scene photos of my little shopping adventures and you'll also see what projects are coming up. Thanks for watching everyone and happy sewing!
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing!